Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Naked Wines special here. Um, so my name's Nick. I'm CEO of Naked Wines. Uh, I spend, I think these days, like a lot of people, you know, my entire life on Zoom calls. And this is a very, very different one because it's one that I'm incredibly excited um, and to be honest, very humbled to be able to be part of. And uh, on the call, we've got, uh, we've got a, a lot of exciting people, but We've got a little bit of wine making royalty to share with you, which is which is exciting, but not not unprecedented here at Naked. So we've got Daryl Groom, who's one of our longest serving winemakers, okay. uh, an icon from the Barossa, now living in Healdsburg in Sonoma County and crafting yeah, some beautiful yeah. wines for you all. Um, but more excitingly, even than that, we've also got him here with a very special extra guest, his son Colby. And they're going to be talking to you a bit today about a wine program we commissioned last year, uh, the Wine with Heart program. And I'm um, delighted to say that uh, we've had an enormous amount of success and support with this program, thanks to the generosity and the support of literally now tens of thousands of angels, both here in the USA uh, and in the UK. So I'm not going to steal any of the thunder on the details, but suffice to say that we are humbled to be able to give a platform to these two amazing guys and to be able to raise some serious money for an incredibly good cause. So... You don't want to be here to talk from me, um, but we have, you know, we'll, we'll do it. We'll throw in the old question as we go through. I'm also here with Max, uh, president of the US business, who so I'll let introduce himself, but and then we'll cut over to the real attractions. All right. Thanks, Nick. Hi, everyone. I'm Max. Um, as, as Nick mentioned, uh, I'm the president of the Naked Wines USA. And similar to what Nick said, you know, very, very humbled and, and appreciative of all of you joining us today. Um, this is a real treat. And I think that, you know, it really highlights one of the core things that is really, really special about the, the Naked Wines proposition, which is really the people behind what we're doing. And it's, it's not just the winemakers, it, it's not just the angels, it's the actual community that we create um, together. And what's, what's really special about it is, you know, with with Naked Wines, I mean, one of the things that we're, we're very blessed to have is some of the world's best winemakers, but even behind those winemakers, they're really great people. And I think that, you know, Daryl is, is, is a very, very good example of someone who not only creates literally some of the best wine in the entire world, but actually, you know, do, does a, a tremendous amount for the community behind that. And, and what we're, what we're going to be talking through today is just one example there. And just to give you some quick highlights is this program that, um, you know, we kicked off last year um, has not only uh, raised $120,000 to date, but uh, since we launched it, you know, seven days ago, we've raised almost $17,000 um, based on your you know, support and contribution. So thank you to the angel community for, for really not only getting to experience some fantastic wine, but supporting a fantastic cause that, you know, both Daryl and Colby um, really contribute a lot of, you know, um, their, their, their free time, which I'm sure they don't have a lot of it, given that Colby is applying to law school right now. And, and, and Daryl has a, you know, a tremendous amount of other things that, he, that he's focusing on with and just continuing to keep the wine flowing to you all. So without further ado, um, I will turn it over to Daryl and Colby. Uh, welcome guys. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, Max. And, uh, um, and thanks, Nick, uh, also. Um, I think, um, first of all, I'm really excited to be doing this with my son Colby. Um, I'm sitting in Hillsburg, California in Sonoma County and my son is in Baltimore at the moment and uh, spending a little bit of time there and as Max said applying for law schools uh, which he hopes to attend um, later this year. Um, but I think the, um, the first thing that I wanted to do is just send a really heartfelt thank you to um, all of the angels that are on this call today, um, it means a lot that um, you take the time to not just join us, but support us in our mission and what we're uh, trying to do. Um, and also a big thank you to the angels that aren't on the Zoom call, but have really participated in a very passionate way, um, again, to help us on this journey of what uh, started about eight or nine years ago and something that 
uh, we, a journey we never thought we would be on, but one that's brought um, lots of uh, tears of sadness, but lots of tears of happiness as well. And uh, this is one of those times where um, Colby and I both feel extremely happy and blessed in life that we get to do this. Um, and I can't not help but thank Naked Wines. Um, one of the wonderful things about Naked Wines is that it's um, um, a partner that fits with what we're trying to do through wine, which is what we know best. But um, there's not a lot of companies that are willing to give so much and give so much to the community and do the right thing philanthropically. Um, so uh, Naked Wines could just simply sell wine like many wine companies do, but they don't. Um, they care. They care about their winemakers. They care about community. They care about all of you that are on this um, um, on this Zoom call. So uh, just to Naked Wines, um, Colby and I feel, and to the whole team there, we're really uh, blessed that we have you as partners and, and that we get to do this. Um, so thank you guys very much. Um, I thought I might just start a little bit and then I'm going to hand over to Colby um, to really tell his story. Um, but I just wanted to give a little bit of a background as to how, you know, Wine With Heart came about to a little degree. Um, so, uh, you know, I came from a real working class um, family, never meant to go to college and uh, the youngest of four boys. And one day I decided I wanted to be a winemaker, which was uh, completely out of the blue and um, something that you never did in our neighborhood. And it was one of the best things that I ever um, decided to do. Um, and um, at a year, early age, um, I had some really great mentors in the wine industry. One of them, Peter Lehman, who was an icon uh, in the Australian wine industry, um, where I was living at the time. And, uh, and at a really young age, I got to be the red winemaker of Australia's greatest wine company, um, Penfolds. And at 25 years of age, I was the senior red wine maker, um, making Australia's most famous wine, Penfolds Grange. And for those that don't know Penfolds Grange, it's a, it is the most expensive red wine in Australia. It's an iconic wine around the world. If I happen to have a 1951 uh, Grange from when I made them and the, uh, the current auction price of that one bottle of wine, which I still have, is $100,000. So you can see the caliber of the wine. Um, and I got to make that wine for about six years and work with Penfold for, um, for 10 years. Um, Penfold bought a winery in California and I came over to look after that wine. Uh, that was called Geyser Peak Winery. Um, I met my wife at Penfold. Uh, we lived in the Barossa Valley um, in a huge wine area. And so my whole life and our whole life has been about wine. Um, Colby's uh, next sibling up from him, Cara, she makes her own wines under her own label, Cara Marie, um, and Colby's involved with Colby Red. So when um, Colby wanted to do something to help give back to the people that saved his life and came up with the idea um, of doing something. He naturally went to wanting to produce a wine together where we could raise money for, um, for heart charities. Um, I worked in the corporate winemaking life um, up until Colby um, had his first open heart surgery. And then um, it was really tough to... Um, be a corporate winemaker and have your um, child go through what Colby went through. And when he was in the middle of his back-to-back -back open heart surgeries, I jumped out of corporate life um, and started our own little family wines. Um, not knowing that down the track, Colby would be a huge part of that inspiring and initiating um, a wine called Colby Red and also now Wine With Heart that, uh, that he does. And this uh, particular wine um, is a huge part of our life, not just in making wine, but it, it 
uh, we're so involved in the heart community now and with everything that this wine stands for. So I'm going to hand over to Colby to maybe just fill in a little bit about his own story and uh, journey with heart disease. Yes. So uh, hello, everyone. Just want to make sure my microphone's on. I did Zoom for the last semester of my college, and I'm still never really sure how it works. But my name's Colby Groom. This is the, the first you'll be hearing from me. Uh, so as a kid, I had my two open heart surgeries, and my dad came out into a uh, came out back into regular life from corporate and spent time with family. And I think you can understand as a kid wanting to get to know your father, wanting to understand what he does more. And so I came to him and I asked if we could make a wine together. And after a little bit of, uh, of pushing and shoving, trying to convince him it was what I wanted to do, he agreed. And one of the things he asked me was, why do you want to make a wine? And that really goes back to I was born with a condition called a bicuspid aortic valve. It's a congenital heart defect that most of the time when a child's born with it, it'll be into their 20s, 30s, or 40s before they need any serious intervention. Uh, for me, that happened a lot quicker. And so by the time of age seven, my cardiologist and my parents started to notice my failure to thrive and my struggles in school where I wasn't growing as fast, I wasn't keeping up with the other kids and knew it was time and that my heart was moving quicker that I'd be having a first open heart surgery. At the time, you know, you don't know what you're going into and you don't know the struggles that are forward and you kind of listen to what your parents and your doctors say to do, not knowing how you're slightly different from other kids. And so in second grade, I went in for my first open heart surgery. I got through this one where they tried to repair the valve and just graft a little bit of tissue over to give it every part it needs and make it work. And it was hard. It was struggling. I still very clearly remember shouting at one of the nurses trying to take out some stitches that they're trying to kill me. And a lot of kids go through a lot worse all the time. And I, as I grow and as this journey goes, I continually remember that. But so I came back to school with a, with a cool new scar to show off to my friends to to you know, get back to normal everyday life, which is also when my parents and my cardiologist noticed that uh, the surgery wasn't a success and that I would need to have another open heart surgery. So within a year from there, they, re they told me and let me know that I'll be going back. And it's a lot harder to go back when you understand the struggles and the pain of what's involved in it. And so with that, it, it's... Uh, it's really challenging to also think of all the other children that have, you know, not two surgeries, but three, four, five. And so we got through, we got through mine and they replaced the valve and I came back. I still have that same valve today. It's a mechanical one. I can hear it tick and on blood thinners, which is never fun, but came back to everyday life. But the challenge was after those experiences, after about a year of having missed school, I, uh, I was having a failure to thrive. I was behind my friends educationally, I was behind them athletically, and I was behind socially. And so one of the ways my parents really helped me rectify and understand my experience and get back to everyday life was by giving back to the community that saved my life. They encouraged me to work with the American Heart Association and local heart charities. So in fourth grade, I gave my, my first speech at an American Heart Association heart walk and I got to cut the ribbon to you know, help raise money and it's, that was an amazing feeling. That was an amazing step in the right direction. And so I continued working with the different heart charities. And when I approached my dad and asked if we could make a wine together, and he asked me, why do you want to? I replied, because if it's good enough to sell, I want to be able to donate to the community that saved my life and help make sure no other kid has to go through what I went through. And so that's really where the journey with Wine With Heart and Colby Red started. And we've pushed along and continued moving through there, raising money. The wine went from doing two barrels in a friend's basement as a father-son healing project to now what we see today, the wine with heart that we all love and enjoy. And so the wine that we all love and enjoy. Sorry, I got a, I got a little tongue-tied there. And so now, you know, I'm 
just graduated college. We are continuing to do the wine, continuing to do what we love together with dad and I, and able to fund the Leah Moore Heart Research Project, which is with the Children's Heart Foundation, another charity I work closely with. I'll hand it back over to dad to talk a little bit more about the wine. Unless I missed anything, dad, can you think? No, you haven't, Colby, and great job there with a whole lot. I think, um, you know, just a couple of things. Um, we're one of the lucky families that we have Colby and I sit and look at him as he talks and, uh, and talks about his journey. We're one of the very lucky uh, families in the world of heart disease. Um, you know, it is the number one killer of children. It's the number one killer of adults. And we feel blessed every day that, um, you know, that Colby's a survivor, but also with his um, surviving it and how it's affected him, that he's taken that black cloud that's been over his head and worked it into a huge positive. Um, so, you know, the story is not just about wine, it's about um, that um, people with challenges can dream and can really make a difference. And, uh, and, and Colby's doing that. So I feel great uh, all the time. There was a time where I was quite sad and, you know, that was when Colby was uh, going through his back-to-back -back open heart surgeries and uh, from a parent's point of view and many of you are in have been in the same situations and uh, you, you just feel helpless you don't know what to do um, and we could deal with the s surgeries and we knew what we were expecting there but um, you know one of the toughest things to deal with was uh, post surgeries where um, you know depression had set in for Colby and uh, and he wasn't really happy with his life and my wife and I'd hear him crying at night that you know um, it's a, the world's a difficult place and, you know, sometimes he didn't really want to be here. And, um, but again, his inspiration to start the wine and give back um, helped him along the journey. And again, I can't help thinking how much Wine with Heart helps a lot of families and a lot of people, but it's also helped us as a family and helped, uh, helped my son, um, helped my son Colby. So one of the things that... Um, Colby does today, um, Colby is, uh, sits on the um, advisory board of the, and you could probably talk a little bit more about the, with the Children's Heart Foundation, Colby. With the yeah, of course. If you have. So the Children's Heart Foundation is the uh, amazing chair, is one of the amazing charities we've been able to support with Wine With Heart. It's one that I've worked closely with since I was young. Today, I have a number of uh, projects on there as well. I sit on the diversity and inclusion task force. I'm on the advisory committee. And one of the really amazing things is uh, I now co-chair and help found the young adult advisory board where we take a number of uh, eight, 18 up to 40 year olds who uh, went through congenital heart defects, went through the different surgeries and different challenges. And we help to try and push research in ways that we think really is central on the patient and the patient's experience. And we work forward on that. You know, there's a lot of people who have a variety of challenges and a lot of people that, as I said earlier, the me having two surgeries is pretty minor compared to what a lot of people go through and that I still live a very full and happy life. One of the uh, other great projects we have with the Children's Heart Foundation is the Leah Moore project, which is what is funded through Wine With Heart. Uh, I talked about my valve and ne having needing to have it replaced. One of the reasons they try and push that replacement so late for children is most of the time valves can't grow with can't grow with kids. They're preset in size. And so what we're looking for in that research project and trying to help fund is kind of what's known as the holy grail for a lot of congenital heart research and congenital heart patients. And that's a valve that can grow with a child. And so the Liam Ward project was, uh, was also named for a local family that we had in Hillsburg, California. Uh, we learned that their child they were expecting was going to have a, a number of problems related to congenital heart defect and challenges. And it really brings back what it's about and the people who really struggle with it and why we do this. I was extremely excited to meet Liam Ward as I would get to, you know, hopefully mentor him and help him grow and understand what we're going through. But he, uh, he passed away about a month into his life from the defects he had. And so we named the project in honor of Liam so we could help fund, you know, that holy grail for so many kids, which is a valve that can grow with them and lessen it from so many kids who have 
eight or nine surgeries because they need to continually replace a valve to a lot less if it can grow with the child. Yeah, Colby was extremely affected by Liam. It was something that we really uh, championed and hoped would have a great outcome. But, um, you know, just sadly something we see with a lot of uh, children and families, and that's why we do what we, uh, what we do. Um, I don't know whether you want to answer a few questions now or we'll wait till the end or whether um, we sort of touch on the wine a little bit. Um, I mean, Dad, you're the winemaker. You can touch on the wine a little bit if you want. I, I know you're itching to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, take, come on, Daryl. Share, share with us a little bit of the, the inspiration behind this blend and, you know, maybe tell us a, a little bit about what, um, you know, we, I think we've now sold, you know, sort of, I don't know, getting on for 100,000 bottles of us. So uh, <laughs> a lot of people have been enjoying it. And that makes me smile all the time too. So, uh, and again, just thank you to all the angels that have purchased the 2018 uh, Wine With Heart that we launched with and those that are, um, are purchasing the new 2020 blend. Um, so Wine With Heart is um, a really special wine to both Colby and I for the obvious region. Um, but it's a wine that we always say not only tastes good, it feels good. There's another dimension to Wine With Heart. Um, so Wine With Heart is a Californian red blend. Um, we went with a red blend because um, twofold. Um, red blends are very appealing to a broad range of people. They're very easy to drink um, and they're just lovely wines to enjoy. Um, when Colby first came up with the idea of doing a wine, um, I asked him, so what do you want to do? You want to make a $50 bottle of wine? You know, I've made these great wines before. And, uh, and Colby said, you know, dad, heart disease, disease affects every family. Let's make a wine that every family can afford um, so that they can all be part of the help. So wine with heart to me is also um, a really great value um, inexpensive wine that you can enjoy every day. Um, the wine's made up of five different grape varieties and it's really interesting when I reflect back on the blend. Um, when Colby and I put the first blend together, we had a range of a whole lot of different grape varieties to blend and play with and whatever. And the first thing we wanted to do was to come up with a wine that just really tasted good that tasted great, that when people had their first sip, they'd come back and say, you know what, I want to have another one of those. And the five varieties we ended up choosing, which went fantastically into the blend, was Cabernet Sauvignon, was Zinfandel, Shiraz, um, Petit Syrah, and Merlot. So they're the five great varieties that are in the blend. What does each bring to the blend? Cabernet is the foundation of the wine and it's the foundation of all great red wines in the world is Cabernet. So um, we wanted to have that for the, um, for the structure and mouthfeel. Um, we added Zinfandel for a little bit of spice. Um, we added Shiraz um, for the velvety texture that Shiraz gives to wine. We added Petit Syrah for color and we added Merlot for softness. And that was the blend that we came up with that tasted really good. And it wasn't until about a year or so later, we started to think about that blend and, uh, and it had a different dimension in itself in why did we choose those five varieties? We chose them because they felt really, they're really good in the blend, but there was also a different dimension with them. And to us, Cabernet, which is the foundation of the wine, um, also to us represents the foundation of family that as all of us go through tough and troubled times, um, it's family that helps you get through them. That's so important. So the foundation of Cabernet to this wine represented the foundation of family that's so important in all of our lives. And we next added, as I said, we added Zinfandel. Well, Zinfandel, I've lived in California for half my life. Zinfandel is the state grape of California. So Zinfandel fits in there representing our time and Colby's lived his whole life in California. We then had Shiraz, and Shiraz is the king of all grapes in Australia. So not only is it real silky and sexy and velvety in the blend, it represents our heritage of where we come from. So that had to be part of it. Um, 
And then in winemaking circles, Petite Syrah, which is in this wine, we often call separately to this, we call Petite Syrah the doctor. Petite Syrah is a really black, dark wine that all you need is a little bit of it in any wine and it brightens it up and fixes it just like the doctor that came to Colby. And then we put a little bit of Merlot in, as I said, and Merlot is known for its softness. Um, and that to me is the softness and tenderness that we felt as a family why Colby was going through um, all of this hope and heart surgery. So the wine has a lot of meaning rather than just the great taste that's in the bottle. It has a, just a touch of roundness and sweetness in the wine that makes it really uh, um, pleasurable and easy to drink. It comes from the Lodi region. We work with a family winery um, in Lodi to um, help us make the wines and get it into bottle. Um, the Lange family, which uh, um, we really appreciate the partnership that we have with them. I hope everybody enjoys uh, wine with heart and enjoys the roundness and the softness and and one of the things that I love about it, just as soon as I look at it and I pour it in the glass, it has this uh, beautiful, lovely purple dark tint to it, which I love to see. And it has this just really vibrant, fresh berry fruit that, uh, that jumps out of the glass. So uh, we've just been working on putting the 2020 blend together. Um, it's now just being all put together in a tank, going through its maturation and the same five grape varieties uh, in roughly the same portions are in that new particular wine. So you're getting some questions about the actual percentages, so not to put you on the spot, but what's the majority, if there is one, for this year's blend? Right, so we always start, as I said, Cabernet's the foundation. So we always, um, I don't have the particular things right in front of me of where we came out with this blend, but generally we aim for about 65% Cabernet in the blend. And that's what we know works really well. And then we work on anywhere between eight and 15% of the other four varieties, depending on how they fit into the blend. And, and we'll line up glasses and glasses and samples and samples, and we'll be blending away, trying to get the right portion. Sometimes it might be Zinfandel's a little bit more than Shiraz or Petit Syrah, and sometimes it might be the other way around. Um, in 2020, and um, one of the really strong wines that came out was the Merlot. So um, Merlot will be probably, um, you know, the second or third biggest portion of the blend where normally it's been about the fifth. Um, so those other varieties just vary a little bit, but in there roughly equally the same. And 2020 was a fantastic vintage. And, um, you know, we hear a lot about the fires from 2020 and they were in certain areas where we grow Colby Red. Uh, there were no fires near the vineyard. So we've got some beautiful wines. They're beautifully structured. They're deeply colored. And as I talked before about Petit Syrah in the blend, there isn't as much Petit Syrah in the 2020 that you're going to get because we didn't need it because we had such deep colored, really flavorsome, beautiful wines that could go into that blend without upping the Petit Syrah uh, percentage. Any other questions? No, I'm just going to interrupt for a moment and tell Dad how jealous I am of the sunshine reflecting off that bottle. <laughs> right now, and I'm confident other people throughout the country are probably really jealous of that. Do you want to share what you're doing in Maryland? Colby people are asking if you're going to school there and what you're up to in the, in the snowy East Coast. Uh, so right now, I'm not going to school. I'm taking a gap year just to kind of optimized with, uh, with Zoom and everything going on. Thought it was best and applying for law school. Uh, currently, my girlfriend is at a uh, John Hopkins program for a biotech master's and moved over here. So I'm just helping her move in and hanging out. Well, I need to experience the East Coast if I hope to move over here. So got the opportunity and kind of came, popped over. But he is applying for law school. Um... So he's going through that process now and looking at East Coast schools as well. Um, Colby, you might want to touch on, um, people might want to hear why you want to be a lawyer and what that sort of means in this whole picture. Uh, so basically I've always been along with uh, what, I've always been interested in politics and policy work in uh, history. History and policy are my double major in school. And so I've 
been fascinated by law and lawmaking. I've been blessed to be able to intern in Congress for Congressman Rick Nolan, who I met at a wine event a few years back. And eventually I want to work in policy type stuff after doing some advocacy work in law. And I'm not sure if that's what you were reflecting to that or. Yeah. Yeah. No, just how you want to take it and change, you know, policy and advocate for. Yep. And uh, that's, that's some of the stuff I've loved to do, including with what we've done with the Children's Heart Foundation, where I work in certain multiple boards, as we said earlier. And uh, yeah, so we'll hope, I'm hoping through law school to eventually, uh, depending on where I go, that's, that's the first step. I need to get accepted somewhere. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but move, move towards a clerkship and then eventually do policy work. And Colby, in the meantime, has been working for a company virtually that does what? Uh, so it's a company that I temp on and off for. I, I did document control there for a few months. It's called Avita Medical Technologies. It does, basically they were able to find a skin enzyme that would help burn victims with a spray on surgery that really cut down healing time and scarring, which is pretty amazing work and somewhere I've been proud to be a part of. And one of the other things Colby touched on a little bit before was, you know, if he'd mentioned meeting Congressman Rick Nolan and, and, that but uh, one of the things that I also want to get across is and um, that I really love about Colby is he really has taken this um, mission and journey that he's been given in life um, as a whole Colby's a sought after guest speaker around the countryside I'm telling this as a proud dad as well um, but Colby's probably uh, spoken in 25 to 30 major cities um, over the last eight years, um, getting up on stage in front of, you know, up to a thousand or two thousand people. Um, he's also travelled through Canada as a guest speaker. Um, but Colby gets up on stage and tells his story. Um, and uh, you know, at American Heart Association events, Children's Heart, I mean, a whole lot of different charity events. Um, tells his story and really tells people that the reason he's here today is because of uh, exactly like you're doing now by just purchasing wine with heart and helping to heart research. Um, Colby's alive today because of the people that donated many years ago that allowed him to have the technology of a mechanical heart valve. And so he tells and, that story and I uh, thought, so, yep. And at least what, uh, what I always think about with it is at some point, what I had would have been seen as somewhat of a death sentence until medical technology pushed along and, you know, opportunities arose and given me a quality of life that I have now. And a lot of the kids today that don't have that same quality of life could, the more we push along with technologies and where we've come 20 years ago when people were fundraising to where we are now are, is amazing. We now have more adults than children living with congenital heart defects. And with each dollar we fundraise and with each bit of research where we could be each 20 years on from now and changes of lives for kids. And so a lot of the work that I love with Colby Red and that we push along here and Wine With Heart is uh, a lot of the work that I love is just that a lot of kids don't that have heart problems don't have the opportunity to do this and don't have the ability to. And it's something I really feel like I need to pay it ahead because there are people who paid it ahead for me once upon a time and saved my life that way. And as Colby spoken at these heart events, um, you know, um, in this, mostly in their special appeal, most of the events have had record raising amounts of money and um, the parts of the night I hear, I've heard Colby give a speech on stage um, probably 50 times, maybe more. I still cry, um, but I cry mostly when um, a lot of parents come up with their little children to Colby and just say, hey, Chloe, meet Colby. You know, you can be like him one day. I know you've got heart disease, but you can be like him. And, and that makes me feel, uh, feel extremely good. Um, we generally keep Colby... Uh, um, we generally keep Colby under control, but one, one day we were in Denver a few years ago and he was the guest speaker there and he disappeared for a half an hour and I couldn't find him anywhere. Did not know where he was. And uh, uh, after about a half an hour, he comes back in and he's got a smile on his face and he said, Dad, I think you said to me, Dad, you know, if you broke it, you have to buy it. And I said, yeah, that's generally a saying. Why? What did you break? He said, well, I met these guys that are from a Lamborghini dealership that gave a lot of money 
to the charity tonight. So they took me out to drive in a Lamborghini. They said, they asked me if I've got my license and I said, yes, but I didn't tell them it was only my permit and I wasn't really allowed to drive. But he said, I drove in the snow in a Lamborghini for half an hour and I broke it. <laughs> but he was lying that he broke it. <laughs> Adam, had him scared there for a tiny bit. <laughs> But we've had lots of good stories along the way, um, uh, along the way as well. And um, one of the things that, um, as people are doing comments, um, again, thank you to all the angels that are supporting us and helping us and uh, um, partnering in this mission to raise money for heart charities. Um, we. As Colby said, the, the first round of funding that Naked was so gracious to uh, um, support with, we gave to the Children's Heart Foundation and did a research program uh, for Liam Ward, and that's ongoing. Um, but one of our thoughts now is the money that we raise for this particular round of Wine with Heart is to uh, look at some other heart charities as well. And we'd love feedback from any um, angels that want to uh, give us um, their opinion or their say. And um, what we're finding now is that a lot of heart charities, because of uh, the non-existence of virtual events, uh, are really struggling to raise funds and they need money for um, what, um, what they do. And we have, uh, you know, three major charities that we also give to that we're um, considering them. Um, one of them is called Hayden's House. Um, Hayden's House um, is a, a, was started by a mother that lost a child um, and struggled with where you channel that grief that now they put together an annual event um, and they sponsor um, mothers who have lost children to get together to, um, to help the healing process. And, uh, and I know they're always struggling with money to be able to fly in all the all the mothers that would like to um, attend the events and be with other um, mothers. Um, we also have um, directly helped families in many ways. And one of the things we got enjoyment out of doing a few times is um, choosing a heart family with Make-A-Wish, um, a child that's struggling with heart disease and, uh, and making a wish come true for um, a child and a family. Um, so that's something that we have... Uh, um, also looked at, uh, um, at wanting to do. Um, and there's another heart charity that Colby's been involved in um, recently called Heart Heroes. Um, it's a national charity and it supports families directly um, in hospitals that need funding for um, getting to and from the hospital, getting for accommodations. Um, but it also provides, and Colby can speak probably a little bit more about it because he's gone to Omaha, Nebraska recently to be their guest speaker there. Um, but they're also a family, uh, an organization that supplies superhero capes free of charge to any little kid that um, is struggling with heart disease that um, just gets a little bit of a benefit about um, being a superhero and, uh, and putting a cape on and, and getting together with other kids and knowing that you're not alone. Um, but Colby and I are also... Um, uh, probably hard to do this time around, but we also fund, fund a lot of heart camps for children. Um, heart camps are a place where, and Colby went to a heart camp, um, heart camps are a place where um, children that feel isolated and alone from uh, congenital heart disease can go and meet other kids and, uh, um, and know, again, that, um, you know, they're not alone in the world with what they're um, enduring. And obviously... Uh, uh, children have different um, levels of heart disease, but um, they can all get together. So there are a few of the things that we're we're certainly looking at with um, with Naked's blessing and uh, and Naked's help to um, help a lot of families in that way. And and I will hop on here for a moment because it's either a complete coincidence or uh, my amazing pediatric cardiologist who still continues to see me, Mike Brooks, sent me a message. So. I mean, Mike's in here. He is amazing as a cardiologist. Super lucky to have him, uh, get to see him in a few weeks, which is always fun. Sometimes they have Toy Story on for the kids when they're doing the different uh, hearts, like heart scans and everything. And I always enjoy watching it too. 
but just wanted to give him a shout out or find out if it was a coincidence. <laughs> so, um, um, Christy, do you, do we, uh, is there any questions that need to be answered or? There are so many questions of varying topics. First, I will say there are lots of people uh, who are fellow heart warriors on this call sharing their stories in the chat. If you get a second to share their story or read their story, I encourage you. They're all very moving. So you're in a community of people that know what you're going through. And if they don't know what you're going through exactly, they're here to support you. So you should feel the love extremely. Um, the other thing, Daryl, you're getting put on the spot with all kinds of wine style questions, blend questions, juice questions. There's like some serious wine terminology being thrown around in this chat. So first well, of all, I'm impressed. Second of all, I'm glad I'm not answering the questions myself because <laughs> me well, I, well, I'm not looking at them. Should I be or? Uh, I, can read, I can filter through some of them right now. In fact, I have okay, people so that don't we answer some people's questions and uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, well, well, Christy filtered through. I've got one to put you on the spot too, because I hear this one a lot. And as a non-American, I find I, I find this one interesting. Um, so love to get your take. Uh, Donna asked that um, I, I've worried that blends in general are just using up extra grapes. Um, how can you disavow me of that prejudice? And, and I thought maybe it's a good chance for you to tell us a little bit about what goes into making Grange and, you know, some of the great wines in the world that are that are blends. Yeah, you know, um, so first, First of all, the answer to the question is no, they're not. You can't, you know, there are probably a few wineries that might do a house blend um, because they've got excess of a varietal that they don't end up in their varietal. But generally, first of all, blends are wines that are made for a purpose and have a lot of passion and high quality behind them. And what people don't realize, a huge amount of the wines in the world are actually blends. Um, legally, depending on the appellation, um, a wine that might have a particular grape variety um, written on the label um, only has to be 75% of that um, uh, particular wine or 85% depending on the appellation. So often winemakers are doing blends to help the wine. And the biggest thing that winemakers want to do is get the best wine you can in front of uh, in the mouth of the person, you want to make the highest quality wine. Um, so Nick, you mentioned Grange, you know, Grange, people think it's a hundred percent Shiraz. I mean, it's not, um, in some years it is, but in most years it has a little bit of Cabernet put in it. And that Cabernet percentage varies from anywhere from a little bit to it's been as high as 15, 18% in that particular wine. Um, so we all talk, varietals today because that's trendy um, because I want to have a Pinot Noir or I want to have a, a Zinfandel or a Cabernet but I think with most winemakers if you said to them if you could make the ultimate wine would it be a blend or a straight variety it would be a blend because you can play around with it and you can different grape varieties offer different um, components to the mouthfeel and the aroma of that particular wine. Um, and again, that's why uh, we did the blend of Colby Red because we wanted a particular flavor profile in them um, and, and a mouthfeel. But the other thing we wanted with Colby Red is if you buy a 2017 Col uh, Colby Red wine with heart, if you buy a 2020, you buy one in five years time, um, we want that to basically be the same flavor profile, have a little bit of vintage variation, but we want wine with heart to be that you know that every year you buy that, that's going to taste the same way. Don't have to think about it at that price point. So blending allows us that uh, flexibility that I can have a little bit more Zinfandel, a little bit less, a little more Petit Syrah, a little bit less, a little bit more Merlot, or a little bit of Cabernet. So. Um, I love blends <laughs> and I love making them and I love playing with them on the bench when we first put them together. So any other questions there? You have a lot of questions around, hey, with this kind of blend, what do I pair it with? And then with this kind of blend, how long do I let it breathe before I drink it? Yeah, so a couple of things there. Um, first of all, um, this wine, um, I like best with what I call comfort food. So I love having it with hamburger or pizza. Uh, that's one of my favorite pairings with it. 
Um, but it will go, it's a red wine. So generally red meat is what you want to pair it with. Don't really want to have it with a salad or you probably, um, you know, don't want to have it with seafood, but you could um, with seafood. So it goes, you know, better with red meat or, um, or stronger foods. Um, because it has a little bit of sweetness in, it can handle foods that have a little bit of spice in them. So great with Chinese, uh, Thai, for example, you'll, you'll enjoy it with. Um, and it's a wine that has lots of fruit. Um, so it will really um, uh, pair well with a lot of, when you pick up that glass and you smell the Colby Red, uh, Colby Red, I keep saying it because they interchange in my mind. Um, so when you pick up wine with heart and you um, smell it, it has this really vibrant fruit and you see a lot of different um, fruit aromas come out of that wine that make it really great for um, make it great for pairing. One of the things that um, you also mentioned is airing of the wine. And most of the time, it's great to drink straight from the bottle. And, but I have had a lot of angels that have contacted us and have said, you know, um, we found the wine got better with a little bit, if we put it through an aerator or had it in the glass for a little while. And I've been doing that with my um, wine with heart lately. And it really changes and softens the profile of the wine. So I think with a little bit of um, air or opening it before actually enhances the wine. So I would recommend doing that. Um, a lot of times I don't have the luxury of doing it. So I just, uh, I drink it straight from the bottle and let it air in my glass as I'm doing now. And do you think that, this is an interesting topic, but do you think that climate change will impact the blend in future years about what kinds of grapes you decide to pick and put in, in the majority of quantities? It's an interesting question that's talked about in the wine industry a lot. And I think a uh, huge amount of winemakers see uh, firsthand uh, climate change and talk about what varieties we might be able to grow in certain areas. Obviously, climate change is, is gradual. So, uh, you know, probably in the next 10 years, I won't, you know, we won't see too much change. But I think over time, um, you, um, not necessarily with this wine, but Pinot Noir, for example, may not grow in the cool climates that we have now. We may have to go cooler climates. Wine with Heart has red grapes in it and traditionally those red grapes do well in warmer climates so I don't think in the short term with this particular wine or even in the next decade we will see much of an effect due to climate change but in 20-25 years yeah we might be looking at a different region if we don't turn back what's happening. So, so Daryl, one, one more that um, we've got a fan on here, a couple of fans. Christy is drinking your beautiful Chardonnay uh, that you make for us. And we've got a couple of other people drinking along and asking about it. So um, one, one angel wants to know the secret of how you get the rich buttery texture into your Chardonnay. Um, and, and I want to know whether or not we might at some point be able to raise some more money for this amazing cause with a white wine in the wine with heart range. Well, Nick, I'm going to touch on the, the more important one first, which is raising more money for something we're passionate about. So uh, we are um, certainly um, really interested in ways that we can raise more money for something Colby and I are really passionate about. And with another wine, you know, could be a rosé, which sort of fitting with heart. Um, and, you know, I would love to hear from angels what they might like as to how we can do it. But, yeah, we're definitely, uh, we're definitely up for it. Um, you know, um, overall with the uh, mission with wine, we've, you know, raised $1.8 million already. And Colby and I would love one day for that to be $5 million. and would love to be it more. So, uh, um, yeah, let's... Uh, Angels, come on, help <laughs> help us with some good ideas as to what you might like and support, and uh, and again, and and out of that, who we can help. Um, uh, Chardonnay, the rich butteriness. So, uh, um, probably the easiest way to explain it. Um, I put my Chardonnay through malolactic fermentation. Um, so, 
some people that might be a little bit foreign um, and I put it through different degrees of malolactic fermentation. Um, malolactic fermentation is the conversion of malic acid to lactic acid in the wine. You don't even need to do that. The byproduct of um, that particular process is a compound called diacetal, which is what the major component of butter. So when you put your wine um, Chardonnay through malolactic fermentation, you get degrees of butteriness. So if I put it through 100% malolactic fermentation, I'm going to get lots of butter. Um, if I put it through a little bit, I might get a little bit of butter. So my job as a winemaker is to work out what that right amount is. Um, and the hardest part for me is um, you're trying to please thousands of angels with a certain flavor profile. So how, and we all have different tastes. Um, I love Vegemite. I love Vegemite with French fries. <laughs> no one else would do anything like that. So we all have different uh, um, flavor profiles, but um, so it's a matter of how do I get it right that most people will really enjoy the wine. And the, and the thing that I love is the feedback on the Chardonnay. And again, many of the other DRG wines that I get to produce, uh, people have certainly loved them. So I hope that answers the question. And uh, at least at least to put down on the spot here, I'm seeing a suggestion for sparkling Shiraz. Oh, That's yes, I love that. <laughs> yeah, but that takes years to come about. Um, <laughs> so I love sparkling Shiraz. It's, uh, it, it was one of Australia's best kept secrets. You hardly ever see them um, in, uh, in the United States, um, but it's a uh, um, it's a wine that's really, really, uh, um, really, really great. So it's uh, a red wine that's a champagne, virtually. And uh, here, I'll also just give a funny, a uh, fun little backstory for all the angels of a, a little bit about one of mine and dad's stories making wine originally. We, uh, I was too young to enter the place we moved up to from our friend's basement. We were making the first two barrels of wine. And it, we had been doing it for about a year. It was really me and dad's hobby that we would hang out together, go and check on the wine and help make it. So we really lost out when Wine With Art got, you know, bigger and we couldn't really do it together anymore. So one of the things we started then was to brew beer together because that was about the time I was starting to learn that. And that's still one of the hobbies we love to do today as well. Yeah. We like, yeah, so we like doing that brewing the beer, but when... The other thing too, is Colby says we made the wine in one of our friend's basements, which we did. Um, and the friend of ours was a well-known wine name in the industry, uh, was actually Peter Sagatio, who was the uh, owner of Sagatio Winery. So um, Peter had, the, had sold their main namesake winery that they had for 120 years and uh, Pete, and his wife, Kathy, who were dear friends, had set up a pilot winemaking uh, facility in their basement. So we were the first wine that was ever made there. Um, but it gave us a good, uh, a good foundation of making two barrels of wine, hoping to raise $500 and, and look how much we're raising today. It's, uh, it's, it's so cool. And I'm just also going to take a moment to quickly hop on some of the private messages I've gotten quickly because I still don't fully know how Zoom private messages work, even though I went to school on it for a few months. Uh, so the Children's Heart Foundation is the one, the one of the charities we support and the one we recently supported through the Liam Wine Heart Rate for the project. It's a little bit confusing because it's called the Children's Heart Foundation, just that overall. Uh, the other one is I got messages about I do do a good amount of speaking and always free or happy to... Uh, join in on any organizations people want or might be interested in a guest speaker. So I'm always happy for that. And the diversity and inclusion task force I work on is with the Children's Heart Foundation where we're really focusing on how to get more inclusion in medicine since uh, it's a very uh, struggled field sometimes to fully get diversity in all methods. And that's something, you know, starts from the doctors, the researchers and goes all the way down to how we treat children that are, you know, regardless of race or ethnicity. And so those are just a couple of the, the projects I'm doing with Children's Heart Foundation. Sorry, that was just private messages and questions. I thought I would hop on and answer. And also, if we don't get to answer everybody's question today, um, 
Colby and I are happy to answer them through the um, uh, through the Naked portal where you can ask questions or we're happy to share our emails where you can uh, send messages to us directly and, and, and we'll both answer them for you. So Daryl shared a pretty fun fact before you guys jumped on this call that sometimes Colby helps him with some of the responses for Wine with Heart. So when you guys <laughs> do write to Daryl to tell him about the wine, you might get one or two of them both. So I think that's a pretty fun thing. Sometimes it's uh, it's me posing as dad. So when you when are you <laughs> when you hear me giving a lot of praise to myself, that might be when it's uh, me commenting. <laughs> We did have a funny one. I can't quite remember it recently where Colby was answering um, one of the posts and he didn't quite know how to answer the question. So he texted me while I was out shopping and I thought he was asking me a question about buying something. <laughs> he said, um, Dad, um, is there any black licorice? And someone had posted they got black licorice in the wine as an aroma and Colby texted me thinking I knew he was answering naked posts and I was in the shop. So I spent all this time walking around the supermarket looking for black licorice. And I texted him back and said, there's no black licorice. He said, well, there's no black licorice. And we just had this funny communication until we realized that we were both on different trains of thoughts. <laughs> I've got the sun coming into me like through the window, like anything, which is nice. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much, Nick or, or Max. Do you have any final questions for the for the gang before we wrap this all up at four? It's been a really great hour so far. So thanks so much for, for being here. Well, look, I think, you know, one of the things we always do on these calls is, you know, these are about fun and, and helping to kind of connect the community and letting people know the, the faces and the stories behind the wine. So it's normally a strict rule on these calls that there's no hard sell. Um, but uh, this is an incredibly good cause. So let's make sure we get the product links up in the chat. Uh, and um, we have, I think, we have the pre-order going. I think still on the 2019 vintage. If I'm, if I'm not too far, 20, too far wrong. 2020. 2020 vintage. Okay, 2020. God, I'm, I'm We're just putting together now. Looks delicious. Really, really good. Time, time is going fast. So, look, I'm sure it's going to be going very quickly. So, please, kind of get yours. Um, some people asked, how do we do the donations on these? Uh, we donate a, a, a dollar on every single bottle of this sold goes to good causes that. And the Colby helps us select. And uh, we would absolutely love to be breaking some records out of the 2020 vintage. Um, so please, you know, buy some, spread the word. Um, and, and thank you so much for just continuing to let us do some of the coolest things. You know, every day it's an amazing privilege to turn up and be part of this community that can make a difference changing people's lives just by sharing something we all love. And, um, you know, God knows, I think we all need, um, you know, something nice that we can, we can share. And uh, yeah, exactly. We need, we need, we need one of them in our lives <laughs> right, right, right now. Um, so thank you so much, Daryl Colby. Uh, yeah. It's a, a massive yeah. privilege. And thank you for sharing your time and your story today. Yeah, of course. And uh, just from our family, we want to reach out and say to everyone who works at Naked, everyone who's helped uh, help support us through this wine, but all the angels as well who help us fundraise. You know, it's, it's as much as we can do to help fund and help save kids' lives in the future, but without all of you being supportive and here to help us along the way, we wouldn't get anywhere. So each bottle helps save lives. So thank you so much. And lives like mine. Yeah. And I just want to say um, also um, thank you to all the angels. You know, you have one of the wonderful things about Naked Wines, you have so many wines that you can choose from. They're made by independent winemakers um, that may, some of them may not have another way to get a wine to market um, as well as what Naked does for them. Um, but you have a choice of a lot of wines and you're all on here today because you're choosing wine with heart. So um, one of the great things we can do is... Um, by doing what we love, which is drinking and buying wine, we get to make a difference in people's lives. So if we can put those things to two things together, which you are doing, um, thank you. Uh, thank you for doing that. Um, to the families that are out there that um, have heart disease one way or another in um, your family, because um, I know it touches it all, um, either directly or indirectly, um, I hope your loved ones um, are doing well and I hope they're on a, um, um, a good, healthy uh, cause. And 
to all the uh, doctors and medical people that help, you know, not only with this, but through COVID and everything. Thank you for, um, thank you for what you do. And I just um, also want to say a thank you to my wonderful son, um, who I <laughs> do encourage to come home as much as um, he can, because I have such a great time with him. Um, um, but it's uh, um, one of the um, proud things as a parent is, uh, um, you, you know, being able to watch you in action, um, but also at an early stage in life, you learn one of the most wonderful things that we can all do, which is to work out a way to give back and be compassionate towards others. And, and I see that with you and, 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 and you know, I feel it, but I just want to say with all the people that are here, you're the best. So thank you for, thank you for doing this. He, he keeps trying to convince me to come back home to hang out with him, sending me all these texts like, hey, I fixed the, ping, the pinball table. Hey, I'm trying to play some pool like you want to come home. Just tempting me that like, that's not going to make me want to come home immediately. Uh, Playing pool with wine is not necessarily a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was talking with a friend the other day and we made a graph over how many glasses of wine and our pool skills and it goes like that. <laughs> You need to stop after three. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, um, again, any questions or anything, um, please reach out. I'm going to try and, I didn't have my chat on, so I'm going to try and read through some of those when everybody's gone. And uh, I don't know whether I can still answer them from there, but, but please reach out with any questions you have. And, uh, and again, thank you all so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Right, thank, thank you for you. joining. Have a great All afternoon. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Christy. Yeah.